changed. So uh, the first one here is, is one of my favorite pieces. And, and, and because you're not assigned to these, you may or may not have looked at it. They're not in the, in the application pieces to do because they're stuff that I sort of do in class or at least talk about in class. And really, I'll talk about this one and one that isn't here anymore that I used to use all the time that, that I like the best. Oh, good. <clears throat> See, Dave, it's doing it already. I may need a new dongle. Back. I have a bad dongle. Um, and that's where it's pretty geeky. Uh, uh, if you get the extra time to read the article, it's really good. At least I think it's really good. Um, it really... I get a big bang out of it. Um, it tells the story of lenses and art, and art history, and of art critics and historians defining when, where there is artistry, when there's genius, when we think there's something really special going on. And essentially, it tells the story of a period before art historians thought for about 250 years that anybody in art used lenses in art. It's a story of a period in history when works were produced that were so different from what had gone before. The people who were the artists of the day were heralded, have always been heralded in art history as, 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 as innovators, as highly creative, as, as masters throughout art history. And then come to find out, hundreds of years later, recently, we discovered that they used lenses to do the work. And by lenses, here we mean essentially uh, overhead projectors, <laughs> modified overhead projectors, to take an image, throw it on a wall, and then copy it. Now, had you know, the art historians between known that they did that, They'd have never called them masters. They'd have never called them geniuses. They'd have never called them innovators. They'd have said, oh, that's mere copying. Whoops, wait. That kind of takes you back to mashups and sampling, doesn't it? That's not, that's not, that's not music. That's not art. That, why can't you do that yourself? If you're not talented enough to do that yourself, you shouldn't have the right to steal somebody else's stuff and do it. Right. But for hundreds of years, we've seen those folks as masters even though there was a technology interposed in the process. So these, the, these features of creativity, the use of technology, what is mastery, what can you do with a tool and still be a creative artist, and how does that all work with culture and what we take and highest, hold in high esteem, um, it's all at risk. And this is a time when it's, it continues to be at risk, this time right now when we're interposing these computers and wondering about then what happens when we use it, when we use them. What happens when we use a piece of software to make a, what happens when we use a piece of software to either enhance what we've done or to copy and mash up or to how, however we use it. Okay. 